something big, very big in terms of worldly wealth. Even it was offered to me, I would not have abandoned that agreement and treaty. So <clears throat> this shows that how important it was for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to stand by justice and stand against oppression. So <clears throat> we don't have many incidents recorded uh, about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam during his uh, teenage and young age before receiving uh, the prophethood as uh, there was no such arrangements of recording. But we have uh, the things which were mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or Sahaba after uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he received prophethood and Sahaba they, they were gathering and collecting a hadith and narrating. So uh, one thing we know that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was working as a shepherd. He was taking care of the sheep and the goats of the people of Mecca. Some people, they, they had uh, flocks of sheep, so they, uh, they were not able to take care of them by themselves, like taking them and herding them uh, all the way, you know, uh, out of Mecca in open lands. So they wanted some young men, strong men, who can take care of their sheep and flocks and uh, herd them all around Mecca and raise them. So, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he like worked as a, uh, it, it was his job, he used to take care of sheep. And it was him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and another young man who used to take care of, uh, of a flock which belonged to can you please settle down, Rami? Please? And give me some space, please. Okay. <clears throat> so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and a young man, another young man, they were taking care of, of a flock of sheep which belonged to uh, to the sister of Khadija and some of them they have named, uh, mentioned the name as Hala. So <clears throat> they were taking care of that uh, flock of sheep and they were working. And you know, when uh, there, there's a certain time when you complete your work, you go for your salary and you receive the salary. And it was a meager job against some darahim, you know, a few darahim. So when it was a time to receive the salary, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the young man, they had to go to Hala, to the sister of Khadija, and they had to receive that salary. So the, the young man, the colleague of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, let's go and get our salary. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, well, uh, if you're going, you, you receive the salary even on my behalf. So he said, why are you not coming? So uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I feel that shyness that in interacting with a woman, that is my boss actually, uh, but because she's a woman, so I feel the shyness. So you're going, you can collect, so you collect on my behalf. And then he said, well, okay, he went and he, he said, he demanded, uh, it's our time for the salary. And she said, okay, that's your part, that's your salary. So he said, uh, even the salary of Muhammad. So uh, she said, why didn't Muhammad come himself? So he said, well, he was feeling shy. He didn't want to interact. He was feeling the shyness uh, for, uh, interacting with the ladies. So Khadija radiallahu was also there. And she, she heard that there, there, there is a man, he had to receive his salary, but out of that haya, he did not come. And she even heard more things about his honesty, 
about how truthful Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. Because even this is the, by the age when he is in his early 20s. And his truthfulness and his honesty is well known in Mecca. Even though he's a, uh, he's a orphan, he is not a wealthy man, he is doing a meager job, but he is respected out of his honesty and truthfulness. That is the reason he was in that setting of the leaders when that agreement of Hilf al-Fudul was taking place. This shows that how respectable and how reputable Rasulullah was at that time. Uh, even though uh, from the financial perspective he was not that strong. This also shows that, that uh, the society of Mecca, it also had some uh, good qualities, good traits that they also respected the, the, the honor, the, 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 the good traits like honesty and all that. So <clears throat> Khadija Radha, she herself was uh, a business lady. She, she was married to twice before Prophet Sallallahu Once she got married and she had children from that uh, husband, he passed away, then he, she married again. And uh, the second husband also passed away. And then she decided not to get married. And she was uh, engaged in business and she was a successful uh, business lady. She carried out business that uh, she was purchasing uh, items from certain places uh, at the time of Hajj and even uh, you know other places. And she was sending out caravan to Syria and to Yemen. You know, Rihlat al Shaitani was safe. We discussed that, that how uh, the caravan, the business uh, routes were different in, in the summer and the winter. Uh, in the summer, they, uh, they went uh, up north towards Syria, and in the winter, they went uh, towards south, towards Yemen. So, uh, she had that activity, and the caravans, uh, she was sending out caravans to uh, different places. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was chosen by Khadija uh, bint Khuwaylid because of his honesty. Before that, she uh, she was sending someone, you know, picking up someone, uh, hiring that person for a job. So, what was the way of uh, like hiring someone? It was not against a salary. In fact, it was like a, a business agreement. You know, you you take my caravan, you sell my items, you purchase, you know, and then you you make some profit, and then we'll we'll share the profit. There will be a certain percentage. This is called uh, mudaraba. Even it is uh, like lawful, uh, uh, even in, in after Islam, in, in our Sharia, that uh, a person, he invests, he, his wealth is being used in the business, and one person, the other party, uh, he, uh, he works, and uh, both of the parties, they, they share the profit. So that was the, uh, you know, setting which uh, Khadija uh, used to have. And she tried many uh, people, you know, many businessmen, but she was never, uh, never able to stick with one uh, because whenever she sent someone, she felt that I did not get the, the real profit which I deserved. And there was a kind of, you know, uh, cheating uh, in that uh, transaction, in that business. Uh, however, her, her business was growing, uh, she was uh, earning, uh, but not what she expected. And then when she heard about this young man, Muhammad, that he is so honest, he's so truthful, but he's a shepherd, you know, he's, he's busy with taking care of uh, goats and sheep. What he has to do with business? But you know this honesty, what a great quality this is. Speaking truth, how important it is, how, what a beautiful quality this is. When Khadija, she saw this quality in, in Muhammad who was not a prophet at that time, she 
she just tried to, you know, hire him and she sent a message to uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I want you to lead this caravan which is going towards Syria. And look at Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he was not uh, like, he did not have that greed for, for wealth. Like it's a great opportunity. He did, he did not just right away jump on him. What he did, he went to his uncle, his, uh, who was his guardian, his caretaker. Not anymore because he's a, he's a grown up man now. But he had this uh, you know, respect for his uncle. That before taking a, a big step or making a big decision in his life, he had to consult his elders. So he went to his elder, who was his uncle, Abu Talib. And he asked him that Khadija, she sent me an offer that I lead his caravan all the way towards Syria uh, as a, uh, and take care of her uh, goods in this business trip and try to make some profit. So what do you say? And uh, Abu Talib, uh, he uh, encouraged that this is a good opportunity for you. Now Khadija is a good lady. She, she's a respectable, reputable lady. Uh, if uh, she has sent you, an, uh, sent you an offer, she must have, uh, you know, assessed and uh, found something uh, good in you and uh, she, she must know that why she decided to choose you. So, uh, you should go for this. And then uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he accepted the offer and he was in charge of that caravan which was traveling towards Syria. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he traveled up to the city of Bozra in, in Syria. There is a, a Basra in Iraq, Busra, Busra in Iraq, but this is the, the city of Busra in, uh, in, in uh, Sham in Syria. So this is before uh, Damascus. So they traveled all the way to that city and they and one of the slaves of uh, Khadija anha, he was accompanying Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a aide, as a, as a secretary or something, as a deputy. His name was Maysa. And he witnessed certain things which he reported when he came back to Khadija. He, he says that I saw that he was walking in, in, uh, you know, in the heat, and there was uh, sun uh, and it was hot and I saw like clouds covering Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, there is another incident narrated by uh, the, uh, the ulama of Sira they say that um, there was one place where uh, the, the caravan stopped and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he sat under uh, a shade of a tree and when he sat down there, and he was leaning against that tree, so a rahib, uh, a priest, he came out and he asked the people of that caravan, who is this person sitting uh, under that tree? So they said that he is uh, uh, Muhammad, he is from Mecca, from Abdul Haram. So he said, well, this is the tree. No one sat under this tree except for he was a prophet. So, uh, that, like this was uh, a certain, you know, uh, symbol which uh, he thought to be uh, a sign of uh, prophethood. Well, this is one of the narration uh, which we find in the books of Sirah. Uh, there is a kind of weakness in the chain, but it's possible, you know, uh, any sign uh, can be there uh, which proves the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, they, they had that trip, they, they went through that journey, and they came back. Uh, the clock is not working, so you have to tell me. Yeah, okay. he's a part of them also. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I'm, look, I'm looking at that clock and it's... I'm looking at that one. <laughs> okay. So when uh, the, the caravan came back, they, came, they made a lot of profit. And it was like, you know, more than double. And Khadija anha, she was surprised that I never got such a profit in my life. You know, I've been sending caravans for such a long period of time, but I never got such a profit. And she was impressed by the honesty 
and even the reports she got from Maisara that what a great man he is, what a beautiful character, the way he socializes, the way he, uh, the way he talks, the way he, you know, deals with others. It's just, uh, you know, outstanding. And uh, she uh, started developing some emotions for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even with the background that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had that haya that uh, he did not even interact with a woman out of haya. So she was really impressed. So uh, she was praising Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much that Muhammad is so good and he's so honest, he's so truthful. So one of the uh, like friend of uh, Khadija, uh, her name is uh, said to be Nafisa. She she said, uh, "Well, do you like Muhammad? Uh, if you want, I can uh, you know talk to him. If uh, he, you both of you get married." And Khadija, she was uh, like having a sort of feeling, but at that point of time, she she said, "Well, this can be thought of." Because before this, Khadija she, uh, you know, uh, she refused many offers and many proposals for marriage. She was not ready to accept anyone as uh, her uh, husband uh, after the, the passing away of his second husband. So uh, at this point, she said, well, this can be uh, thought about. And then Nafisa, she, she went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she casually asked that, what do you think about getting married? Aren't you planning for getting married? So he said, well, I'm an orphan of Mecca, and I'm a, you know, taking care of goats and sheep. Who would marry me? Who would like to marry me? So she said, well, uh, there can be some uh, openings. <laughs> you know? Uh, and she told, uh, she said, what about Khadija? What if Khadija, she proposes? So he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was surprised and he said that, uh, why would Khadija marry me? But he said, if she, uh, she is willing, I can accept it. So he gave a green signal and then that's how Nafisa, she was the mediator between and she made this uh, you know, relationship to happen, and then they went through the ceremony of nikah. Inshallah, the details will will discuss in the in the next session. Inshallah, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allow us to learn this you know special quality and a, and a special trait of honesty and truthfulness, and how this honesty and truthfulness was part of the personality and the character of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right from his early age. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to develop that beautiful character. Amin.